welcome friends today we are going to have a discussion on how to control multiple servo motors using pc9685 and raspberry pi pico first let us understand why we need to control multiple servo motors and why we choose this pc9685 and also raspberry pi pico for our video today so if you see the picture what you are observing on the screen now you can see two humanoid robots controlled by Arduino boards and this motion control of this humanoid robot is achieved using servo motors. You would have seen plenty of uh, servo motors connected in the humanoid robots and this humanoid robots need to make a motion like it can walk or it can move the hands and it can move the head whatever the movements you need as per the code so these movements are achieved using these servo motors so as per the requirement of uh, the movement that is the uh, how many joints you need to have to have a precise control or a precise movement so based on that the number of uh, servo motors will be increased or uh, decreased so if you see the servo motor uh, which is shown in the picture here it is uh, having the first one is having almost 13 servo motors to have a control over the leg movement and uh, hand movements and then the head movement. So how to control this many number of servo motors? If you look at the Arduino Uno or uh, any other board like ESP32, Node MCU, uh, all these boards are having very limited number of input output pins and uh, pulse width modulated pins. So if you are using more number of servos, that means the control signals uh, which is needed for the servo should be connected to the, you know, the Arduino board which you are using. Say if you are using Arduino Uno, it has only six uh, pulse width modulated pins. So you cannot control more than six servos using Arduino Uno. So likewise, the many uh, boards having uh, many uh, limitations. So we need to control these servos using our Arduino boards and the more number of pins also must not be used. So what is the effective way of connecting this many number of uh, servos with less number of input output pin. So there comes the solution the PCN9685. So this is a dedicated board for controlling the servo motors. So pulse width modulated signals can be uh, generated from this. PCA9685 and it can control a single board can control 16 servo motors in case if you have more than 16 servos you can cascade this PCA9685 and you can control more number of uh, servos and uh, why I have chosen Raspberry Pi Pico I can pick I can uh, take any other Arduino boards as well the Raspberry Pi Pico is uh, very small in size and powerful as well it has more number of uh, uh, advantages compared to the Arduino Uno or any other boards and it is cheaper as well. So uh, for me the compactness is more important because I am going to uh, design a um, inner humanoid robot in upcoming days. So I need to have a compact devices and uh, it should also have the capabilities of uh, the big controllers like Arduino Mega. So that's why I uh, prefer Raspberry Pi Pico for doing this job. right? So now uh, let us go into the details of this Raspberry Pi Pico. In our previous video I have already discussed uh, a few features of this Raspberry Pi Pico. So again uh, I am going to discuss only few points about this. I am not going to elaborately discuss about this. So what are the facilities I am going to use and why I have chosen this Raspberry Pi Pico will be uh, clearly understood by this uh, small explanation. So if you see this Raspberry Pi Pico, it is very small in size and it has a uh, 40 uh, input output, uh, 40 pins and um, in that uh, multiple functions are being achieved. So like uh, power ground uh, UART and uh, GPIO pins. Uh, which can be also used as pulse width modulated pins and ADC, SPA and uh, I2C communication system control debugging all these pins are there in this particular uh, board. So we will see few features of this board. Uh, first one is I2C because I am going to use this I2C communication in my uh, PCA9685 so that uh, it is very important for me for achieving the task using uh, this board. 
so we have two i to c communication channels in this particular raspberry pi pico the default one is a, uh, is uh, available in gpio 4 and gpio 5 and the remaining uh, pins can be also used as shown here uh, i to c 0 or i to c 1 so these pins can be used i am not going to read out all the uh, details about this i just want to tell you what are the features available here so we also have the analog pins like um, uh, four uh, analog channels can be used uh, you know, for uh, measuring the uh, you know parameters like uh, volt, uh, voltage current or temperature humidity like uh, any analog signals so uh, effectively speaking three pins can be used gpio 26 to 28 and 29 is used to measure the power supply unit and uh, also we have 30 so which is used to measure the internal temperature so these are the pin numbers for the analog so these are the key features it is a 12 bit resolution analog uh, uh, measurement adc uh, device and it has four adc channels as i told you little earlier so three can be used to connect a peripheral device one can be used to measure power on the board and uh, the another one can be measured to um, measure the temperature SPI we have SPI 0 and SPI 1 serial peripheral interface the default pins also shown here GPI 1 19 18 17 16 so these are the four pins default pins for SPI serial peripheral interface other than that you can use also these pins for connecting uh, SPI devices any peripheral SPI devices can be connected using these pins so you have to assign those if you are not using the default one so otherwise you have to use the um, assignment in the program UART for a serial for a serial communication also we have UART 0 and UART 1 so the default pins are connected for GPIO 0 and GPIO 1 RX and TX pins so other pins if you want to use the software serial or you can also use this uh, pins built in LED we have GPIO 25 so this is a built in LED if you want to blink the LED just to make sure that your board is working so you can use this GPIO 25 in Arduino Uno I hope it is number 13 right so we can use this GPIO 25 for uh, as a built in LED servo interfacing with Arduino so um, it is very essential to understand before going to multiple servers how to control um, a single servo using Arduino. So Arduino needs pulse width modulated pulses to control it. So actually when we are connecting the servo motor to or any Arduino we will use the R, um, pulse width modulated pins like pin number 9, 10 like in, in Arduino Uno. So to control the pulse width uh, modulated uh, output for controlling the servo motors. So the duty ch cycle can be changed to um, control the angle of uh, rotation. The servo motor has three terminals that is VCC, ground and pulse width modulated uh, pin or a control pin. So it looks like this a small uh, servo motor is represented here. So we have VCC, ground and control pin. So these three pins will be connected to the uh, required pins like a 5 volt supply will be given to VCC and ground and then control signal will be coming from the Arduino board. So that you can uh, write the code in the Arduino board and you can control the servo motor so internal construction of the servo motor uh, i hope you already know it so it will have a gear mechanism and feedback mechanism along with one small dc motor and uh, so that uh, the angle of rotation can be controlled using the feedback mechanism so in in, in case if you have any uh, doubt and any clarification about that working principle let me know in the chat box i will uh, explain it in the other video so PCA9685, so as I told you earlier, it is a 16 channel servo driver. So that means you can connect a 16 servo motors using this single PCA9685. If you have more than 16, you can cascade them as well so that you can have multiple uh, boards and uh, it can control more than uh, 16 servo motors as well. So if you see the features, what are the connection pins and things like that. If you see here you can see the ground pin vcc pin and scl sda so these four pins are essential for connecting um, to the arduino board remaining pins uh, output enable and b plus we will not be using in case if you want 
to use v plus also we can use instead of that i actually v plus is given here so we can use these two pins for um, giving the power supply to control the servo motor like 5 volt uh, uh, 2 ampere or 3 ampere current rating adapter output can be connected here so that the servo motor will take the uh, power supply from these pins and the control signals will be coming from the arduino board through this so this is what the uh, required pins pca9685 and uh, principle of operation of this particular board the module is based on pca9685 microcontroller which allows pulse width modulated outputs to be controlled using i2c communication this is what i said i2c communication and an integrated clock this module has six bridges to select the board addresses and to place on the same bus up to 62 controllers for a total of 992 actuators uh, available addresses from 0 cross 40 to 0 cross 7f so these many uh, controllers can be connected 62 controllers can be connected in cascade and uh, 992 actuators can be uh, connected using this particular module so maybe we will not be using this many number of uh, actuators but uh, this is possible so that is what uh, i mean so the default address of this uh, board is 0 cross 40 and from there you can assign the addresses for the next uh, upcoming uh, cascaded um, devices i will let you know in the next uh, upcoming slide about that addresses it can drive pulse width modulated output with adjustable frequency and a 12 bit resolution the module is compatible with 5 volt and 3.3 volt microcontrollers so most of our microcontrollers are the arduino boards are 505 volt in uh, some course if you are using uh, esp32 node mcu kind of uh, boards 3.3 volt also available so pulse width modulated uh, width are usually given in microseconds over a period of 20 uh, milliseconds 50 hertz so this is the operating frequency of a servo uh, motors but these values can change from one actuator to another actuator and between vendors you will have to modify these values in the code to adapt to your uh, your actuator in our case we use mg90 actuator whose range is from 400 to 2400 microseconds over 20 milliseconds so these values you can uh, read it from the uh, spec or the data sheet of that particular motor what you have so 400 to 2400 is a um, range for this mg 90s to set the pulse width modulated command the library provides two functions so we are going to use a uh, other fruit uh, uh, device so we are going to use the library from the other fruit itself so in that two functions we are going to use set pulse width modulation of this function and the right microseconds of function so these two functions are uh, used for mul uh, different purposes the right microsecond function directly you can use it that, that that means direct numbers can be given for the set pulse width modulation function we need to find corresponding pulse width on 4096 that is 2 power 12 uh, because of 12 bits example the frequency is 50 hertz set a period of 20 milliseconds or 20000 microseconds so pulse width um, value minimum and pulse width value maximum so these two you have to find out so this is a simple calculation so as per the data sheet we have minimum and maximum uh, durations are given 400 to 2400 microseconds for minimum pulse width modulation 400 out of uh, 20000 this is the total available time for the 20 millisecond uh, motor or a 50 hertz motor so 400 divided by 20,000 uh, and the resolution is 1496 so if you calculate this it will come around 81.92 so approximate to 90 uh, so this is the minimum margin and the maximum margin is 2400 uh, divided by 20,000 and 1496 so if you calculate that you will get 491 so it is uh, approximated to 480 as a maximum pulse width so these two calculations has to be done as per your motor available uh, data sheet so the motors can be of different uh, numbers and different uh, this one so say for example if you have mg995 uh, the number may be different and if you have uh, uh, you know the mini servo hd1160 so the number can be also uh, different so the number what i have is mg90 so accordingly i have calculated 
So these two functions, uh, if you see PCA uh, right microseconds i comma 400 equals to PCA set PW i comma 0 comma 90. So this means the minimum range if you give in a microsecond directly you can give i comma 400. In case if you want to set it as a pulse width, so then you will give as a i comma 0 comma 90. So this is the minimum pulse width and here the maximum time period is 2500 microseconds here you can give it as a 480 as a width pulse width so this is the calculation so this is a simple things which we need to understand uh, while understanding the program so yeah, control pins we have scl and sda for uh, i2c communication so scl is a clock pin connect to your microcontroller ic i2c clock line can use the 3 volt or 5 volt and the uh, data SDA is a data pin I2C data pin and uh, OE so which we will not be using now but uh, let us understand what it is output enable pin output ports so we have 16 port as I told you earlier we have 16 port each port has 3 pins that is uh, supply V plus ground and pulse width modulated output. Uh, pins which so these three pins will be connected respectively to the power supply ground and uh, the control signals power pin so we have ground vcc cascading another pca 9685 module so if you see uh, if you want to connect multiple um, pca 9685 in case of uh, more number of servo motors to be controlled so this is also possible like this uh, connect these pins available in the board so if you are using these pins for connecting the controller these pins will be uh, freely available so which can be connected to the next board so if you are using the third board so these pins can be used for connecting the third board and uh, the board each board will have the addresses so i will let you uh, know in the next slide uh, connection wise you will connect like this and then later you will assign the address for each board what you are going to cascade so in this picture if you, if you see uh, there are uh, points A0 to A5 so this uh, particular area we, we are going to use for selecting the addresses for this cascading boards. The different combination of address bits from A0 to A5 can be set different addresses for each module. Thus, the PCA9685 supports up to 62 unique addresses including the default address. So in theory you can connect up to 62 PCA9685 modules to the same I2C bus each with a different addresses. So the addresses the default address is 0 cross 40. The other addresses can be given like this. So if you choose uh, none of the pins are shorted say for example you you have two pins here if this a0 uh, pins a0 a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 these none of them are shorted then the default address will be chosen 0 cross 40 suppose if you short these two pins a0 pins if you short these two pins then it will be considered like this 0 0 0 and the first one is shorted so this means the a0 bridge is shorted and the address is 0 cross 41 and if you short the next two one that is a1 pin if you short the a1 pin the address will become like this okay so it will become 42 so like this you will have different combination so this is none of them shorted so five of them shorted also possible so if you go go on so you will have 62 combination in this so based on that you can have a address so you have to physically short circuit these two the pins a0 a1 a2 a3 and that particular respective addresses can be assigned and this will be used in the code now let us see the wiring connection for controlling a single servo motor using this uh, raspberry pi pico and uh, 9 uh, pca 9685 uh, 16 cross 12 bit pulse width modulated controller so it is very simple uh, we will have plus 5 volt to the vcc and ground to be connected to the ground and we will have the scl and sda pins will be connected to the raspberry pi pico 
default SCL and SDA pins. So once you connect this and uh, give the power supply for these pins here plus and minus for uh, the power supply of this particular motor. So this motor if it can handle 5 to 6 volt then give 5 to 6 volt here so that this power supply will be coming to this motor through this. And the code for controlling this single servo motor is given here. So first include wire.h and we are going to include this other fruit PWM servo driver.h header file. So this we have to uh, add in our um, Arduino IDE then only you will get this uh, header file. If you not add this one so it will have a error. So you have to add this PWM servo driver. So uh, uh, like uh, other uh, functions how you add similarly you can add so how to add them just go to the manage library here and uh, just type this uh, PCA9685 so you can see this PCA9685 you you have all these um, drivers available so you can choose the other fruit so So you can choose this other fruit library function. Yeah, you can choose this one. Yeah, this one. You can see this one uh, other fruit pulse with modulated servo driver library. Install this servo library, then you will get this uh, header file. Otherwise, when you execute the file or when you compile the program, you will have a error here. Okay. So install the driver. Then next we will go to the setup. In the setup, you are going to set the serial communication and PCA9685 communication. You have to start, and the frequency is set as a 50 hertz. So as per the data sheet. Okay, so sometimes it may be 60 as well. So you have to check out the data sheet of the pulse um, motor what you have. And in the loop, I am going to have a simple sweep program. So which will uh, rotate clockwise 0 to 180 degrees and then anti-clockwise 0 to 180 degrees. It is very simple code uh, which you can easily understand by yourself. So there is a for loop for uh, making a forward motion and there is a for loop for making a a reverse motion and uh, uh, this set servo angle this is a function with uh, variables so this function will be called when it is going inside for forward motion and the function program is written here so it will carry the variables here and uh, it will map the angle so say for example if this uh, angle is incremented to 10 so it will have 10 here 10 so the 10 uh, will be mapped. So, the maximum angle of rotation is 0 to 180 and the maximum available value for the pulse width is uh, 150 to 600. So, in our discussion little early, I have shown different numbers, uh, but uh, here it is in the code, it is given 150 to 600. So, it, as I told you, it, it depends upon the uh, different motors. So, these numbers can be different, but this is a constant 0 to 180. Most of the servos are having these numbers. So this 10, so this data will be uh, arriving from here, this uh, uh, this will be getting incremented, right? So 10, 20, 30 like that. So that value will be available here. So that will be mapped uh, for this 0 to 180 degrees and the pulse width modulation angle, pulse width is this much, okay? So that will be given here. So it will get the values here, PCA 9685 dot pulse width modulation servo number and this servo number and this zero and pulse length. So this will be given so that the motor will rotate each and every increment here. It will keep calling this function. It will come here so that the uh, pulse width will can be changed so that the angle of rotation can be increased or decreased for the second. For controlling two servo motors, we have uh, uh, included only one servo here remaining connections are remain same 
so it is uh, very simple just add this one servo motor to this pin and you can keep adding the servos to this and uh, pins upcoming pins if you see the code also we have not included much so same header files and things like that so what we have added here is we are going to add uh, two motors so that we are going to have two loops for uh, different motor we need to have a uh, different functions so when it is going to function all those things we can uh, define it later so I, I, as per my requirement one motor will go forward and uh, reverse and the second motor will go forward and reverse this is what i need so that's why um, i have written the sweep program itself for both so here you can see um, the servo set servo angle 1 comma angle so that means this is first motor and this is zeroth motor in the pca 9685 so this is the only difference so remaining all the loop and everything is going to be same so the next one if you are adding the third motor the same functions two functions will be added but you will write uh, here instead of uh, one you will write number two or number three where you are connecting in the pca 9685 so this number can be uh, included so accordingly you will in increase the number of uh, servo motors so that it can uh, do the function for you so this is a um, you know uh, example of connecting uh, almost all the servos 16 servos to the motor so though i don't have the i i did not uh, have the code here but as i told you little earlier you can add them just uh, same like this instead of one you will increase two three four like that and the motors what it has to do i put a 0 to 180 maybe you can write 0 to 45 0 to 90 or 0 to 60 as per your requirement so each motor will have different uh, tasks so that the angle also can be different and uh, <coughs> the number of uh, motors what you need that also can be increased using like this so this is how we can control the multiple servos so these servos will be connected in the arm or the leg or head so that uh, you can move the hand of the serv um, robot or uh, leg of the robot or head of the robot or uh, wrist of the robot so any anything can be achieved so uh, this is the application of this controlling multiple servos maybe you will have a different applications as well i have just taken one well known example of humanoid robot okay so i have used uh, those um, information from this particular uh, website circuit digest so they have also much good information about uh, these servos and current pc9685 hope it is very clear and in case if you have a doubt please let me know uh, in the chat box thank you for watching and uh, supporting me